Hey guys, King Gath here with Bethesda Mod School. So in this lesson, we're going to go over two things. Um, one is a method for you guys to speed up getting your stage item spawns and building stages set up for your building plans. So for any of you who followed along the Sim 101 tutorial and you started doing that stuff by hand, if you've continued to work in that method since then, I'm sure you know just how time consuming it can be to fill out those fields. Well, we've got a way that takes all of that work and drops it down to taking maybe a minute, two minutes tops. Uh, it's very, very fast once you get going. But for a lot of people who have been following along with the Builder's Toolkit, it's a very intimidating idea, the idea of doing things with scripts and importing stuff into your plugin. But I figure if you watch me do it, you'll feel a lot more confident and you'll suddenly magnify the speed you can take all of your work in design so you can go from the simple lego building that happens in the creation kit to getting your whole building plan configured in just a couple of minutes it's it just makes the whole process a dream it's how people like you at you it can pump out literally hundreds of building plans uh, over a small period of time so if you guys uh, want to speed up your building plan creation this is a great way to go about it the other thing this is going to show you aside from that is how you actually apply scripts in xs it, but it, this tutorial is going to assume you went through the Sim 101 tutorial and the X Edit 101 tutorial so that you've got the very basics down. So now you can see right now I've got my test add-on loaded up and I have created a couple of real basic uh, building stages for our building. And one of the things I want to uh, talk about with this is the fact that you you can actually use these static collections for the in-between building stages. So you can see we have kind of some transitional stages before we get to our final building. Um, now, if we were to do the same thing we did with our main model, so our, our actual main house that we did in the Sim 101 tutorial, we ended up exporting that and creating a, a, a NIF file, which we can see we placed here and called it building test one level one. Um, we created that file, and this is actually a, a reasonable size file. I think it's three or 400 kilobytes. And while individually that's not a big deal, once you start adding, adding those up or getting into more complex buildings, I mean, for example, a level three complicated building, I'm trying to think of something in some settlements, like think of some of the Industrial Revolution buildings, those can end up being several megabytes each. And so it adds up very fast for Xbox players in particular, but also people who just don't have unlimited bandwidth to be downloading uh, on all their mods constantly, especially if you're if you're looking to create a add-on pack that you update regularly. Um, so one of the things we can do with the X-Edit scripting that you can't do in the creation kit is you can make use of these static collections in your stage models. So it'll help with reducing the size of your add-on. And so that's a very powerful thing. Um, now we can't do that with our level models. So we do need to continue to use these, these statics for the final level models. But these in-between stages are perfect because we don't actually care if the NPCs can navigate in these. Because the idea is that these are just kind of a, a thing for the player to see some visual progress. Now there's an argument for maybe wanting to nav meshing the in-between stages for people using realistic build times. But I would argue against that in, because the, the mass size increase uh, in the file plus the minimum number of people who are using realistic build times but also the fact that you could argue that during the construction phase people shouldn't be wandering around inside of that uh, dangerous construction zone and we don't have animation markers doing that anyway all of the animation markers that the settlers use for building the buildings are all placed in this zone on the left and right of that arrow so it's not like you really will ever see settlers walking inside of there anyway so I, I think the there's really no reason to be nav meshing the in-between stages. And so the static collections are absolutely perfect for that. And again, we can only do that with this X method, X edit method I'm going to show you. But not only is it that benefit of the uh, X edit method, but there's also the fact that this actually takes quite a while. So if we pop open uh, our test building plan, and we go to stage models and we and we go to add one, I'm sure any of you who have been doing this after the tutorial know of how time consuming this can be, but also sometimes frustrating is that when you click static, it takes quite a while for that menu to actually load. And that's just the way that uh, Bethesda has stored their data. But it's also annoying because if you were to accidentally click again too soon, or if you used your mouse wheel or something, and this goes off static, well, then you got to wait again for it to load. Um, but now we've got to filter through and find our item. And this whole process to fill out, especially if you did a good number of building stages, like I find that a good number that feels good in the game is about five or six in between stages. For the sake of speed for this tutorial, I just built two. Um, but I would recommend five or six stages between each level to have a nice, good transition that feels feels like constant progress while the player's watching it happen. Uh, in order And doing that many, you're talking about... 
uh, you know, 15 different entries you're gonna have to plug in here, which would take quite a while. So I would recommend highly using the uh, import method for the stage models, but I would absolutely recommend it for the stage item spawns. And that's because, again, if we plug this back in, or if you remember from your Sim 101 tutorial, that you essentially have to, for each item, manually plug in all of the position data. Some of them, you, depending on if you rotate it or not, you've got to plug in that, and it can be very time consuming. And there's a way to automate all of that as well. All right, so uh, right now I've created the stage models. You can see I have one there. I've also added some additional spawns in here. I added uh, a door, and we're going to press one here twice to hide the building. I've added uh, some clutter. I've added uh, a chair, a light, uh, and just a bunch of random items just to show you guys the power of this other method. So there are a few things we need to do to get prepared for this. So first thing you're going to need is XEdit installed, which I assume if you went through the XEdit 101 tutorial, you've already got that. You're also going to need the Builder's Toolkit downloaded, which you can get uh, from the link. I'll have that linked below that's available on Nexus. If you're going to follow along these Sim series tutorials, you should just go ahead and download all three of my toolkits. We're going to get to them all eventually. And uh, those will have a bunch of useful resources in them. So I've already extracted the Builder's Toolkit here so we can get the files we need. So what, what you're going to want to do is have, uh, you're going to want to open up the Builder's Toolkit and you're going to go into this XEdit scripts folder and you're going to grab all of these .pas files. Uh, so there's a bunch of them. You're only going to actually use four of them for this particular tutorial, but the rest will be used eventually. So you might as well grab them and you're going to just copy these. Then you're going to go into your XEdit install folder, wherever that is, and it should have a folder in it called edit scripts. You're going to go in there and you're going to paste in all of these scripts from our directory and yeah, say yes to replace these scripts. Uh, two of these scripts, MTE functions and dubh functions, are created by community members from uh, Elder Scrolls days. Uh, MTEs is by Mator the Eternal. I don't recall who authored dubh functions. Um, so mad props to them for creating these. I don't actually know if they want me redistributing these or not, but I um, finding them was actually a real pain in the butt. Um, so my apologies to them. I did include them in uh, the thanks and everything everywhere just in case. Um, but if anybody knows them and, and it thinks that they're going to have one more, if one of you guys happens to watch these, I, uh, please let me know if this is bad for me to do. And um, I'll just put up links where they can download if I can find them again. Um, but I was just trying to make this convenient for you guys. So those are libraries created by some awesome authors. You know, we're always standing on the shoulders of giants when we're modding because there's so many people who have figured out way more than I have. Um, so mad props to them. All all right, so once you've got these scripts copied over, the other thing we're going to need are these sample building plans. And the reason we're going to need these is just because they give you a nice template to work with. Really, the import stage models isn't necessary because you're going to see that it's just a, a single column of entries. Um, but uh, if you have Excel or OpenOffice installed, you can use these on your computer. Otherwise, you can upload these to your Google Drive and open them with Google Sheets. So I love using OpenOffice. It's totally free. You can get it at openoffice.org at least in the US, I don't know if that's internationally available, but we're gonna copy these CSV files out and uh, I've created, in my downloads folder, I've created a KG test folder. Uh, you could create a folder somewhere. I also generally work out of, for the main sim settlements, I have a folder where I keep all of this stuff we use for the building plan imports that we do through this XEdit scripting method. Um, so the way the way this effectively works is you end up creating a spreadsheet with all the data and then you use XEdit scripts that we wrote that I just had you copy paste in there. You use those to import that data into your plugin. Uh, and so you can use whatever spreadsheet program you want. These CSV files are just samples so you can see what they look like. But in the case of the stage item spawns, they also will show you what the, they have a header row that shows you what data you should put in each column. Um, so we're going to rename these so that uh, we remember which building this is for. And this can be useful later down the line if you need to make a tweak. You can edit these and then re-import them and it will overwrite your existing data. So it's real easy to edit existing building plans. In fact, the plan today is to just edit one of our existing building plans. We're just going to edit this uh, KG test building plan 01. But if you decide that you want to work, if you that you're working on a new building plan and you want to do this process for a new one, make sure you create your new building plan uh, before we get to the X edit step because you will have to close out of uh, the creation kit to do that final step. All right, so we're gonna rename these. So we're gonna leave the stage items, spawns, and stage models on the end there, but this is our KG test building 01. These names don't actually matter. This is literally just, because you're these CSV files, you use them, you effectively just use them once and then you're done with them. 
I like holding on to them so that I can make tweaks in the future, but uh, it's totally not necessary. So whatever you want to name them, I'm going to name them exactly after the building plan so I can find them easily. And I've got one for stage models and one for stage item spawns. So let's start with the stage models. We'll open this one up. This one you have to fill out a little more manually than the stage item spawns one, which you can, the stage item spawns you'll be able to do by exporting the data from the creation kit, which we'll cover in a moment. Uh, but basically what you can see here is we've got the Sim Settlements armor store set up. And uh, as you can see, I went a little shy on the number of stages I suggested. So like I said, I, I felt five looks really good. Now, one of the things you'll see with all of my building plans, is I tend to front load. I put a lot more building stages between built construction and level one because what I've found was that most players in testing and now in in real life post launch is that very few people ever actually watch the in between stages of level two and level three. It's usually they'll be hanging around waiting for the first one to build and they'll see that happen. And then the others tend to happen while they're away from their settlement. So then having a lot of stages is not particularly valuable. But thanks to this static collection method of being able to have them take up no additional space in your plugin or minimal, it's just a couple of kilobytes, uh, having a minimal impact on space, then there's really no disadvantage to having those other than the time it takes you to create them. But uh, when we get to the stage models tutorial, which I will probably show as a combined as part of something else, like I'll do that plus show you uh, building clutter or something, um, it's, it's very easy to add additional stages. All right, so this is just showing you an example of what one might look like because this is our sample file. But effectively, all it is is you do each of your stage models one after the other uh, and your level models all in order that you would like them to appear in the game. So we're going to go ahead and delete these these ones. We're going to leave the first one. We're just going to we'll replace whatever building materials we were using before with that. That's fine uh, because we're, this is just our test. But your first one, this is what appears before the building starts construction. So it's a good idea to use those building material piles. And then next comes our stage one, etc. Uh, and we just do you just do them all in order. So ideally, you would do this after you've got all of your levels ready to go. But you don't have to. Um, if you want to test with one level or if you want to have a building plan with less levels, that's totally fine. Um, in this case, we've just got our one level, so that's what we're going to enter in. So let's go back in here. So the easiest way to do this, I find, is to just copy and paste this information. So you can, if you select a form in the object window and then click it again, it will highlight the name so that you can copy it. So I just hit Control C on my keyboard and then you press Escape to cancel from accidentally editing that. Uh, and then we go back into our spreadsheet and we're going to paste that there. Um, now, I already know the stage two is exactly the same except it has stage two. So I'm just going to paste again and just change this to a two. And then we'll go back into the creation kit once more. Now for the for the level model, we don't want to use the static collection because of nav meshing. So we're gonna use the static record, which you can tell the difference, not only in my case, because I've been suffixing with underscore S call, but also because of the icon. The little blue house looking icon is a static, whereas the SC with the green backdrop is a static collection. So we're gonna grab our, our level model and we're gonna paste that editor ID next. All right, so now this is effectively done. So we're gonna go ahead and save our stage models. And yes, we wanna keep the current format. And there's there's one other thing I should I should double back and show you in case some of you ran into this and you didn't know how to respond. So if you if you're new to using Open Office or if Excel gave you a similar screen and you didn't know how to answer it, when you open up these spreadsheets with Open Office, you're gonna get this form. And there's a couple of things to note. One is the, the sample spreadsheets are, are comma delimited. So that means separated by a comma. So you're gonna wanna check that in and uncheck this tab. Uh, and you can preview what it's gonna look like. It should be pretty obvious how these should come out that the things should line up nicely under the different columns. So when you opened up this first file, um, just check in the comma delimited and uncheck tab. And uh, that should allow it to open up cleanly. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up this other file as well. This is the stage item spawns. This big mess is pretty intimidating, but 90% of this is all done automatically by the uh, creation kit. So we'll, we'll show you that in a moment. Um, but once you've got this <coughs> stage models file done, um, go ahead and save it, but leave it open because you're going to need uh, you're going to need some information from here in a moment. So we're going to just uh, we already saved, so we don't have to save again. All right. So the next step is filling out this monstrosity. So right now, again, all this data is here just for your reference, so that you can compare your final stage item spawn spreadsheet to this one to make sure that yours looks similar. So we're going to go ahead and delete out all of this data. We're going to leave the header row in there. Um, now this up here, armor store secure stop, this should just say editor ID because it's the purpose of this is to be uh, a 
a header row. It's supposed to show you what goes in that particular column. I don't recall exactly why I had the name of the shop up there. It was likely something hold something held over from another example I was doing at some point, and I've just forgotten. So um, you can ignore that. It doesn't actually matter because this this header row can be anything. It doesn't matter. It's just for your use. The uh, the script when we import will skip this row automatically. So this is just showing you what should go into each of these. Now, if you had to fill all this in manually. It would be no faster than just doing the creation kit method that you learned in Sim 101 tutorial. So the reason this is faster is because you can actually export all that data directly from the creation kit. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we've got our stage one set up here and um, we'll, we'll unhide everything just so you can see. So what, what I would recommend doing is hiding your building model so you can select an item, press one twice to hide it so that only your spawned objects are left. Then you're going to select all of those in the uh, render window here. And you're gonna go to File, Import, Export, and then, well, let's see, where's that? Rough Placements for Selection. And this will bring up this so that you can save it. So we're gonna die, we're gonna go back to our KG test folder, and we're gonna name this again. We're gonna try and follow the same uh, naming scheme of naming exactly the same as our uh, building plan. And in this case, we'll do uh, CK Export as our file name. And what that will do is that will export all of the data you need. So it exports the position, the rotation, the scale of each of these individual items, as well as the editor ID. So it makes it real fast to fill this next piece out. So then if we go back in here, you'll see that there's this CK export.txt file. Well, OpenOffice uh, can open this as a spreadsheet. In fact, Excel, et cetera, can do that as well. So what you'll do is you're gonna go to uh, file and then open. So we've already got this here and we'll navigate to our new file here. Now the difference here is, and the reason I just showed you that uh, other screen is that we need to be able to, oops, and this did not do it correctly. Uh, we need to open this as a spreadsheet. So the the easier way to do that for, for my sake, because I've already got this set up, is you're gonna right click on the file and go to open with. Now in my case, I've already done this before with text files, so open office calc is there, but what, you, what you'll wanna do is hit choose another app and then navigate to Excel or open office calc. And what that will do is bring it up just the same way as when you double click the CSV file. So you get the same screen. Now the difference is, is that the creation kit does not do comma separated spreadsheets. It does tab separated. So you're going to swap what you did before. So you're going to make that tab and you can see this loads up nicely and we'll go ahead and run that. And that will open up a new spreadsheet. And basically what we want to do <clears throat> is copy all of this data. So we're going to highlight the data we need. We don't need that header row and we'll hit control C in our keyboard. And then we'll come back into our stage item spawns. We'll click in that first empty uh, entry there, the first cell, and we'll paste, and you'll see everything lines up nicely. So the XYZ, XYZ, it all matches up with the way the creation kit did it. And that was by design. That's how we set up our uh, script to match this data, knowing that we wanted this to be a faster method. All right, so now you're left with all these other fields, well, I'm here to tell you that most of this can be left blank. So <clears throat> if you followed the Builder's Toolkit already for doing this, for the XEdit scripting method, it tells you that you have to fill out this spawn name field. As of the current version of some settlements, that's no longer the case. This is an optional field. In fact, <clears throat> wow, voice uh, needs some water. The uh, spawn name field, I would highly recommend you don't fill it out because it does bloat the script data. And since we've long learned that the script data can be a problem with Fallout 4, Anywhere you can shave off a little bit is useful. So the spawn name is generally used for replacements. So for example, any of you guys who have lower end systems, I'm sure you're familiar with the performance settings screen of Sim Settlements where you can turn off certain pieces, like you can turn off the clutter or you can turn off animated objects. For some of those, like animated objects, it's nice to offer the player an alternative and that's where the spawn name field can come in. Uh, <clears throat> because if two things have the same spawn name and one of them is disabled and skipped, then the next item with that spawn name will be used in its stead. Now, if both are enabled, it will only use the first one. So for example, if a player had animated objects spawned and you had a replacement below it, it, it once it spawned the animated version and it came to the unanimated version you had, it would just skip it if it had the same spawn name. So that's what that field's for. But most of you aren't gonna use it. That's only for kind of power creators or people who really wanna uh, make sure that they have multiple fallback options for, for different player styles. 
All right. So before we cover the fields that you actually do need to fill, I want to I want to cover one thing I, I missed here is that's part of this thing in the editor ID might seem a little odd, and that's this extra 001 tagged onto the end. The reason for that is because if you had multiple of a particular item, so say we had two of this hanging light bulb, it wants to differentiate this creation kit wants to differentiate between each of them. So there would be a another number there. So it would be 002 for the second light bulb, 003 for the third of that exact light bulb, etc. Our script, when we import, handles those automatically so you don't actually have to delete those. So that's totally okay that, that those are on there. All right, so in reality, the only actual other field you have to fill out besides this is this stage number field. All the rest of this is optional and some of it, in fact, most of it is more advanced than we're even gonna talk about in this tutorial. I'm only gonna talk about uh, now columns J, K, and L because these are the ones that I think most of you will find use for. Uh, but the absolute minimum you would need to do is paste in the data that you get from the creation kit export and then fill out this stage number and that could be it and then you'd be you'd be basically done and ready for the uh x edit portion of this which is very very fast it's usually the, the smallest portion of this whole tutorial um so we're gonna fill out this stage number now if you remember from in the creation kit i told you to figure out what the stage number is you would look at the stage models field now presumably because we're going to be using the import you won't have this filled out yet and instead you will have this spreadsheet filled out well in the ck you were able to just look at the number next to the column but that doesn't work in the spreadsheet because the creation kit uses a zero based numbering system whereas the spreadsheets like excel and open office and google sheets will all use a one base so all we have to do to convert is just subtract one so in this case we want all of these items to appear at level one right we want these to appear when our full building and i'm gonna hit alt one to hide this we want all of these items to appear after this building exists so this building exists as the fourth stage well the creation kit and fallout 4 consider that the number three because they count stage one as a zero so all we have to do is subtract one so in this case the stage number we want is three four minus one is three so we're going to just go ahead and fill that out so we want all these to appear at stage three so we just enter that in to all of these you could also do you could enter it into one select all of them and then uh, paste and yes we'll paste that data in and it will do it that way as well um, so you would enter that in and then if you had multiple levels here so you might be wondering, how do I do additional levels? Well, if you had each of your stage items spawned, so right now I have my test building 01, I had, oops, uh, let's bring this back up. If you had all these, you would essentially, what I would recommend you do is have a layer for each. And then for each layer, you select the items, do the export again, and each time you do the same thing. So if we assume this is what our level two was, you would just go back into your, your spreadsheet with your level. So your level one stuff is all here. You would just go right below it and paste your level two stuff and then enter the stage number for your level two and then the same for your level three and repeat. So that's very, very easy. Um, but we're only gonna do the single level for the sake of keeping the tutorial short. All right, so the next two fields that are useful are the I stage end and I type. So I stage end can be useful if you want an object to exist between levels. So let's say, for example, that in level two, you keep using that same bed. Um, so you might as well just leave this around. So you would basically, instead of having I stage end be blank, which when I stage end is blank, what that means is that after the building passes this stage, the item just disappears. So as soon as this building starts to construct toward level two, it would go the next stage after after three would be four so that doesn't match three which means all these disappear but if instead let's say that we did have the exact same data for level or let's say we had we had our level two and this was pretend this information is all different these are all different items uh, and let's say that the stage number for level two was six so we had all this filled out so if we wanted yes uh so if we wanted our bed to stick around and just be there in all of them so if we pretend this this bed isn't here if we want our bed to exist between both levels we could put the stage end to be six and now all of a sudden this bed would appear at level one which is stage three and it would continue to exist until after stage six so you can use stage end like that to keep items uh existing in the same now where the true benefit of that comes is for players using realistic build times. So realistic build times, for those of you not familiar, basically allows the game to simulate or some settlements to simulate that the builders are taking a more realistic time to do upgrades or building uh, of their house. So because there's our little shacks and stuff, when we say realistic build times, we're saying uh, realistic to build up a quick little shack, which you know we estimate it's like a day. So it's, it's semi-random, so it'll be a day to a day and a half. 
and uh, that's how long it will take. Well, the problem with that amount of time is that if there's no, uh, no bed during that period, then the settlement will take a happiness hit. So often what I suggest people do is at bare minimum, they make sure that their beds survive up to right before the new stage. So let's say that at level two, we want a better bed. We didn't have this exact bed. I'm going to just copy this exact bed for the sake of having a record there. But let's say this was like... Uh, metal bed lay better like there was say there was some sort of bed in the creation kit called that and we wanted that to be their level so what i would do instead here is just put five as the stage end so then what happens is the bed exists through the upgrade stages and then at level six it gets replaced with this one so the stage end i recommend you at least do for the bed to make sure the bed sticks around while the building's upgraded for those players using realistic build times all right now for the sake of our example we're not doing all the different levels so we don't need any of that so we're not going to be using i stage end but that's effectively how you would make use of them now the field we are going to set up and one i highly recommend all of you learn how this works and play around with it is the i type so Sim Settlements is a heavy performance hitter. And for people on PC, especially on any modern gaming machine built in the last couple of years, it, it's not a problem. But for anybody on a little bit older gaming machine or on an Xbox, Sim Settlements can be pretty brutal on their systems. And so this iType field allows you to help them out. So that there's a performance section in the Sim Settlements hollow tape, and it has a bunch of entries. And there are things like you can turn off animated items. And I already mentioned this briefly, but I'll go over it a little further. Uh, detailed lighting, clutter, there's all sorts of things you can turn off. And essentially, this I type field is what how you tell some settlements which of those classifications each of your items has. Now, you're not going to have one of these for everything because there are some items you're not going to want the player to be able to disable. For example, you don't want them to disable your bed because then all of a sudden your house wouldn't be very effective. Uh, so you aren't going to fill this out for everything, but there are two in particular I would highly recommend everybody fill out. And one of those is clutter. Clutter items tend to be a heavy performance hitter, and you don't ever actually really appreciate them unless you're popping inside of the houses. So 90% of the time when players are playing, after they've already given your house a once over, they're never going to see the clutter again anyway. So it's really, really just a waste of rendering resources. So it's a great one for players to gain a performance boost by turning that off. And that's the most common one I recommend people turn off who are having performance problems. So that type is the number nine. Now you can find a chart of all of this in the Builder's Toolkit in the PDF. So if you're looking, I believe it's in the third one, maybe the fourth one, I can't recall. Uh, but uh, when you're going through the Builder's Toolkit PDFs, you will find a an entry about, or one of them is something about uh, lights, furniture and more, something like that is, is the name. And uh, that will have a chart of all of these types in there. This is also available in the creation kit. So I believe if you go to, let's bring this open. You can also find this if we go to one of our stage item spawns. I believe if you select an iType, yeah. So if you click on iType in one of these, you can see here's a little reference chart and I'll just read it off and uh, maybe we can type it up in the comments or something. So zero, you don't actually need that entry. That means that it's just every, that object should always appear. One is a detailed model. This is very rarely used. Uh, detailed lighting, this is one I recommend used a lot. Animated objects, special effects, so like the smoke and fire and stuff. Uh, radios, sound creators, NPCs. This would usually be things like pets. Like there are some buildings, I'm sure you guys have seen in some settlements where it spawns a dog with it. Uh, container types, clutter, water planes, animation markers. So there's all these different subtypes you can flag your items with in case players want to disable those. And uh, in this case, I recommend just, just doing clutter and extra lights. So extra lights is a tricky one. The way you determine that is uh, by just experimenting yourself. And what I like to do is I bring up, bring up my building and I zoom in so I'm inside of there. And then you pull, press the A key, which will turn off the general lighting in the world and just leave your lighting for your particular plot. And what you'll want to do is let's pretend we had multiple lights here. So let's go ahead and we'll duplicate this guy. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. And we did. Okay. I see the warning was because it created it on the uh, test building stages, but that's fine. We're going to delete it anyway. Um, so if we have both of these here and let's say we had multiple lights, so we have three or four different lights around here. What I would recommend you do is start hiding them and see what the light looks like and get it down to as few lights as you need to where everything is at least bright enough to be visible so that players can see it with just that bare minimum lighting and like get it down to one or two. Those you would count as your primary lighting and those you're gonna leave alone and all of the ones that you were able to hide without 
completely uh, making this place dark and unable to see, those are the ones you're going to flag as extra lighting. Those are nice to have because they make things look brighter. They make, uh, you know, you can do some interesting detail work or some of them have some kind of fancy fixtures that will just make your place look nicer. Those you're going to want to tag as extra lights in your type. And those, that's the number two. So in our case, we don't have any extra lights, so we're not going to flag any. Uh, but nine and two, nine for clutter, two for extra lighting are the ones you're going to most commonly use. And the reason for that is because those are the heaviest performance hitters so if players who just turn off detailed lighting and clutter can have a huge performance boost without losing access to all the cool little details you've done in your building design so those are the two i recommend everybody do so in reality if you wanted to do this little work of po as possible to get your building plan up and running you just need to copy paste the information that you exported from the creation kit and fill in your stage number field if you want to be helpful to all players you would fill out i stage end for your bed and fill out the i types for any of the appropriate items and then you're done. The rest of these fields we're not even going to cover right now because they're too advanced for this tutorial. And for and for 90%, 95% of building plan creators, you're never going to use them anyway. All right, so we'll go ahead and save this guy and hit keep current format. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you need to close these spreadsheets out in order for uh, XEdit to actually make use of them. So we'll go ahead and uh, close that and close this. And so the next thing we need to do is launch XEdit. Oh, and we actually what we need to do is save our plugin. Um, and you're actually going to have to create, you're going to have to close the creation kit as well in order to make a save to your plugin. So if the, if it's open in the creation kit, then FL4Edit cannot save it. So we're going to go all the way to the bottom here and open up our test add-on. And so you're going to open that up in FL4Edit and then go ahead and close the creation kit. So I'm just going to right click it and hit close and that can run. Um, one thing I mentioned in the XEdit 101 tutorial, which I'm going to reiterate here, is never ever edit anything until this background loader finished comes up here in your messages. If you have the tip screen enabled, the tip screen will disappear as soon as it's ready for you to start messing around with things. So if you start mucking around too soon, you can actually zero out your plugin where when you go to save it, it'll actually just be a blank empty file and that's can be really bad. Um, I learned that the uh, very, very hard way and had it zero out uh, some a lot of work on me because I wasn't aware of that problem. So hopefully you guys won't have to suffer the same fate. Okay, so essentially, since we're editing our test building plan 01, we can just click on this here. So you're going to expand your plugin, expand to MISC item, and click on the building plan that you're going to make edits to. Right click, hit apply script. And in this script menu here, you should see alphabetically a list of all the different scripts. Mine are all prefixed with KG sim, so they're nice and organized. We're going to start with import stage models, and you hit OK. And this is going to ask you to enter the path for the particular uh, for the particular CSV file we created. Now, we actually have a version of this that uh, will go out in the next builder's toolkit that I'm not quite ready to release. Uh, but in the next update, it will be a version that just has a file selector as opposed to you having to enter the file path. Um, that was something I didn't know how to do, but uh, Pra, who helps us out a lot with XEdit scripts on the Sim Settlements team, uh, made a better version of this. I just haven't included it with this particular build. All right, so you just navigate to your file and you're going to uh, copy. So we're gonna copy our full path there. We're gonna paste that in. Then we're gonna add another uh, back. Oops, I'm hitting the enter key instead of the backslash. <laughs> uh, so you enter another backslash and then you're gonna grab the name of the file. So we're gonna grab our full file name here, including the extension. If you don't have extensions revealed like I do, um, when you paste in, you're just going to have this, and then you're just going to have to add .csv. So essentially, you want the full file path in there so that XEdit knows what it's grabbing, and you just press OK, and that will import all of those different things. And you can see here, down in the messages, it says importing each one, and it says it'll it'll view a message if it can't find it for some reason, which should not be the case unless you miss if you get some sort of error down here, or if an error pop up comes up, it means you likely mistyped the names of one of these. And you'll need to fix that before it can import. Uh, and you can confirm that it actually worked by uh, clicking off of it and clicking back on. And if you go under this VMAD virtual machine section down here, you'll see there's all these different properties. And if we start shrinking some of them, um, you can see the name of each one. And we go to stage models, you'll see that the stage models is all bolded because it entered them in. And you can see there are our entries. There's the stage one S call, stage two S call, and our test house static record. All right, so now there's one more thing I forgot to cover before we do the import of the stage item spawns. There's actually, there's actually two things I'm going to cover. One is if you ever get an error when you're importing the stage item spawns file, which works exactly the same as what I just showed you. It's just a different uh, script you'll run. Uh, but if you ever get this range check error 
That basically means that somewhere in your spreadsheet, there was probably a empty space. So like there might've been a space there. And so then you can't see it when you look at your spreadsheet, but it is detected when you save your file. And so then you end up with a mostly blank row and the uh, an X edit does not like that. So what I recommend if you run into that is you just basically grab a bunch of rows below where you've worked, select them by holding shift key and just push delete and uh, just delete all that data. And I would do the same in any of these empty uh, columns here as well. So we'll go ahead and delete that out just to make sure because that actually did happen for this particular one that I generated. Likely, <clears throat> excuse me, there was uh, some blank data off over here because this was the sample file. And uh, it's actually made me think I'm going to have to update the sample files in the uh, Builders Toolkit so that anybody else who follows along this method uh, can uh, get the right ones. So by the time this tutorial comes up, I'll have already updated the Builders Toolkit with that change so you guys won't see it. But just in case any of you already had a copy of the, copy of the Builders Toolkit, just go ahead and delete anything out here. So there may have been a blank space that would give you that error. The second thing I want to show you guys is for those of you who want to make use of the random clutter like I did, uh, one of the tricks we did, so originally, so this I already edited uh, before I started recording the video, but uh, basically this is what you would have had if you had done exactly what I did. And you notice that there's not only the three numbers that the creation kit adds to identify each item, so it adds 001, it also had the number 06 on the end. So the way that random clutter works is rather than you spawning an individual item, it spawns a form list. And you guys have seen form lists if you did the Sim 102 tutorial where I showed you how to set up your building plans all into a form list so that you could tell some settlements about them. And the form lists allow you to take a bunch of different records and put them all together in a list. And then Sim Settlements, when it detects that you gave it a list instead of an item, it will randomly select an item from that list. And so the one thing we did with our naming scheme to make this easier to use this method with is that if you used an actual static item that's a random clutter and you want to convert it to the form list, all you have to do is chop off all these numbers. So if you get rid of all this, then now all of the random clutter that's of type stored alcohol, narrow medium, which narrow, the we described the type of space it was designed for. So narrow medium is designed for uh, bookshelves and, and larger shelves and things like that. Uh, basically, the, the actual form list is named exactly the same as the individual items, just without numbers at the end of it. So you can just delete all those numbers. And now when the script goes to import this, it will know to import the form list instead of that individual item. So that's a little trick you can do to make use of our random clutter system so we're gonna go ahead and save these changes and we'll close this guy out and then we'll go back into xedit and we're gonna apply script again and this time instead of import stage models we're gonna do import stage item spawns we'll press ok and just like before we're gonna copy our path we'll add the little slash and then we're gonna grab our CSV file here and type in the extension .csv. so then we hit ok and it will run and it will see, you'll see that it's attempting to create entries. It creates all six of them, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And uh, just like before, we can double check that. We look under our properties, we look for stage item spawns and uh, each of the entries will have, uh, let's see if we expand this a little bit. Yep, each of these will have this struct entry. So we can see one, two, three, four, five, six. Now these are a little harder to see in uh, xedit than they are in the creation kit which is one of the reasons i like using the creation kit for this sort of thing more than the ck other than this import method i always do that but there are some people i've seen who actually will manually enter in data like this in the uh in xedit and i find it to be a little cumbersome for script for scripts in particular these uh data structures because they don't lay them out in a nice easy way because each of those entries is actually has four different fields for it. So it can be a little cumbersome to fill those out. Uh, but you can, if you scroll through those all, you'll see that all the data matches up. There's the X set, the uh, offset X position, Y, Z, uh, form to spawn is our actual chair object. So you can see each of the different objects that actually appear there. All right, so then you're basically done. You close this out, save it. Uh, load it up in game and you should have all of your changes in there if you already had the plot built you would just hit refresh plot to see all of your new item spawns appear if you added new stages you're going to want to build a new copy of it because adding stages into an ex already existing plot will cause problems with it it doesn't like that uh, and so even refresh might cause some issues so you're going to want to just try it go ahead and try building it again all right guys so that all that video probably took about 45 minutes in reality that process once you get used to it 
to do the actual export from, from the creation kit, create those spreadsheets and bring them in here, takes just a minute or two. Um, that's why people like Uit Uit can generate hundreds of building plans uh, because this stage, once you get into this method of, and in fact, I think he did most of them without this method, so he's a madman. Uh, oh, love, love you, Uit Uit. Uh, but uh, basically, this is how those of us who build a lot of buildings are able to produce them so quickly because the actual Lego part is very fast. And then this makes the second half of actually implementing the data very, very fast as well. So I would highly recommend everybody use this method once you've done a few. So I, you, you definitely want to do your first one like the Sim 101 tutorial where you do it manually. Um, and the reason for that is because it helps you, by doing it manually, it helps you to understand what you're filling out in these particular fields. So without doing it manually, it's first of all, you don't appreciate the time you're saving, but you also don't, you might not fully understand um, these stage num fields, which are which you start to wrap your head around when you do it uh, the manual way. All right, guys. So uh, hopefully that helps all of you out. Stay tuned for more tutorials. I'm going to continue to post these out every week until I run out of ideas for uh, stuff you guys might want to learn.